This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dax Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langan, voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go. Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on TalkTimeLive.com. TalkTimeLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTimeLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live! Hey, this is Jeff Thorne. I am the writer, producer, showrunner of the Avengers Black Panther's Quest TV series, and you are listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. It's time. Talk time. Let's go. Anime, comics, movies, and games. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Started in the 80s with Matt Cross. Dudes in the hood might have called that soft, but I carried that cross like Jesus did. Fast forward, I teach the kids to learn how to let go, live life, and show love to all things that don't matter. Where y'all from? And luckily, there's a show called Talk Time. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Dax kicks the facts on all the geek news, special guests, and unbiased reviews. Suburban kids, the hipster street dudes, all can learn something new. Me too. I heard words when no faith is empty. I stayed the course, so my haters tempt me. Beep the podcast, that'll make them envy. It ain't too trendy. It's ACMG. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the Prime Show. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. Very awake, surprisingly, this morning, along with my partner this morning, the return of Joe Rinaldi coming on to the show. We said we, we were going to do this again. I am more than happy to have this gentleman back on the show to talk about one of the biggest, and I mean the biggest, payoffs ever mm. in Hollywood history. <laughs> That is Avengers Endgame. We're here to review it. There's no going to be there's no other segments that'll be talked about. There's nothing new in the world of ACMG but this right now. <laughs> this is it. I mean, like even if there were news, there's not any news worthy or bigger than there what we're going to talk about here. So, Joe, how are you doing and how are you recovering from this? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Unlike yourself, I was able to see it a little earlier in the day yesterday, so Bless I wasn't up soul. quite as late. Um, but I am. I am very much like you, still like processing and kind of you know taking it all in. And I am very much looking forward to uh, to seeing it again tomorrow. I have twelve o'clock tickets with my wife, who didn't get a chance to with me yesterday. So oh, bless I am, her heart. <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped that I get to kind of run back in again and watch it again this right. time. You know, and just and, and enjoy it a different way. Now, you got to see it with your kids uh, yesterday, correct? I did. I saw it with my my 14 year old son and my 11 year old son yeah. who loved it. Oh, how, what is not? Yeah. To, I, I got to say, man, before we really get started, like, first of all, thank you to everybody. And I mean, everybody who respectfully, res- for the sake of it all, did not mm. spoil any of this movie for anybody and let, allow people to experience it. Because this was an event. This was a milestone mm-hmm. event. This was this was the Return of the Jedi moment mm-hmm. for people mm-hmm. who never got a chance to have that Return of the Jedi moment, mm-hmm. without a doubt. And I humbly thank everybody for not spoiling it, despite there were a few assholes out there. Yeah. I've, enc- but- I've encountered one of the assholes. Luckily, what he tried to do did not affect 
anything of what people okay. have seen, thank goodness. But you got to get one of them all. Did you have any, uh, you know, hard times trying not to uh, get spoiled by this movie? Well, no, I, I definitely had this like mounting anxiety Thursday into Friday oh, that yeah. I would not be able to avoid spoilers. Like I had like a real, a real dread. Same that, like, you know, and I, and I found myself not going on Instagram. I found myself, I, I unsubscribed from the Marvel Studios Reddit. Yeah. Like I just tried to block as much of it as I could. Um, my 14 year old, unfortunately, um, some ding dong 15 year old social media celebrity decided to add a spoiler to his Instagram story. And my son kind of glanced across it. Uh. He, now, he discounted it right away and didn't think too much of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it did turn out that his spoiler was pretty apt. So yeah. it didn't affect my son too, too much. He also my son was cool and kept that to himself. But yeah. uh no, I I feel like you. I I was really really focused on, like I unsubscribed from people on Facebook. I didn't go on. I have like a I have two Twitter accounts. One that I use for like following basketball, and yeah. one for general purposes. I didn't yeah. check the general purposes one at all. I was really afraid of spoilers. Yeah, it was. It literally, I did the same thing. I agree. I it was social media withdrawal. Mm. <laughs> Pretty much mm-hmm. is what is what I yeah. is what I did, and yeah. it was hard, but not hard at the same time. And I liked it because it's like, yeah, we can't cut off that the virtual world for a time, yeah, and focus on other things. Luckily, I had other things I was focusing on as well. And it, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm a gamer, so the one the other really biggest thing that happened this week was Mortal Kombat 11, which was also mm. in its own right a huge blockbuster in itself. Mm. Like they went through major production to create a hell of a story that was. Damn near as competitive as any Marvel movie that you've ever seen mm. from a story standpoint. So I, I was actually able to focus on that as well. Yeah. And, you know, awaiting this. And, and me, because I have my Facebook group and it's like 20, over, almost 2,800 people in that group. Yeah. I got to, I'm the admin for that group. I got to traffic yeah, yeah. everything out. So I yeah. also had to take the bullet of sacrifice by putting a, a spoiler zone post for that you know we have talk time started as a spoiler zone posting for people mm. who wanted to talk about TV mo- TV shows and movies before anybody else got to see it and not spoil it for anybody else and you know mm. ward off people that weren't spoil it and then right. the transition to what we're doing right now mm. so uh doing that I had to comment on that but I had to t- immediately take notifications off I had to <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I had to yeah. make sure that you know I I, I had to make, but I had to make sure that people were able to talk about it when the time comes that's both yeah. east and west coast as well yeah so, i don't it, know it if i would have been able to i wouldn't have been able to hang in there as long if i wasn't planning to see it on saturday you know yeah. if i was not going to see it until the following week i don't know i don't i don't like my chances that i would have been able to avoid <laughs> you know everything that long i think like a couple days i was able to avoid it but yeah. Uh, yeah i think if it had gone much longer i don't know i i do think that like if you don't see it by Next weekend at the earliest, yeah, you're kind, you're going to be cooked. I think in this case, because of how things were in the record setting uh, mm. sales and box office mm. uh, sales that they got, it has mm. to be this week. It's normally things will stretch out mm. for a week, but I yeah. think because the the record setting that they're going to uh, achieve this weekend yeah. alone, I think everybody's seeing it. I think everybody's yeah. going out of their way to see it. So by next week, it's just going to be old news. Yeah, I hope. I mean, I think the only thing that's tough is that it's a three hour movie and. I think a lot of people, you know, mentally, it's very hard for them to imagine putting aside three hours to go to the movies. Like, well, you it just say that, like, but we went through the Lord of the Rings era. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was true. You know what I liked about those, though? I mean, the, I, I agree with you entirely. The one thing that Lord of the Rings had going for it was that they dropped at the holidays every year when yeah. people, you know, and, and for me, I know it was part of like my holiday every year. Yeah. It became like this tradition. Which to, is now the Star Wars holiday. Yeah, no kidding, right? I mean, they, they were smart enough to to pick up the marketing of that and realize yeah. how powerful that was. Yeah. But yep. even, even still, I mean, like I, I thought they, this was a tremendous deal. And if, if true fact, yesterday was the 27th, one year to that day, I went to see infinity wars and I didn't realize this. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's wild. Yep. Yeah, Cause I got one of those Facebook reminders. I'm like, was it really the one day, one year to this day was, wow. well, it feels to me, it feels like it was much longer ago than just a year. It it really did. It really really yeah. did, man. So let's get into it, man. Let's talk yeah. about it. We're gonna go into like just overall <laughs> thoughts on it. We're yeah. gonna talk about standout performances, favorite mm. scenes and moments, and 
predictions pretty much what we're gonna what we want to see next from okay, here. Okay. So, uh, Joe, I, I'll leave it off with you, man. Your overall <laughs> thoughts on the possibly the biggest payoff ever. Yeah, I, I I thought it was very satisfying. I mean, and I agree with you. I had the same kind of high stakes in mind that this had to this had to cash a lot of checks yeah. in my mind for it to be successful. It had a lot of a lot of homework it had to do, and yeah. and I felt like on almost and I, and to be perfectly candid, like I still I, I need to see it again to kind of Get fully process. But yeah. but I left with the feeling that it it checked all those boxes. You know, I felt yeah. like it. It did a good job of focusing on the the main six Avengers in meaningful ways because really this is their movie more than anybody else's. Yes. And Thanos. You know, I thought like the 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 seven characters it really had to be true to were the six original Avengers and Thanos. And I felt like all seven of those characters had, you know, deeply constructed story arcs within the movie. And then on top of that, to your point, like I think their individual story arcs um, wrapped up a longer narrative from the movies they appeared in earlier, you know, their, their kind of cumulative yeah. um, story as well. So, I mean, from that standpoint alone, I felt like it certainly accomplished everything it set out to accomplish. What, what do you think? I mean, did you have any reservations or thoughts about how some of the, the main characters were treated? No, I absolutely not. I thought the Russos did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Piecing every because you talked about two guys who were there for they were there for a portion, a portion of the mm. t- 11 years. Right, right, right. You got to remember, these are the guys who, who directed Community. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. This still kills me. Like, yeah, no up. kidding. Um, and Arrested Development. Like, these and, are like, and, yes, hardcore comedic directors. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, you got these guys who, you know, took the baton of Joss Whedon and John, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Favreau and mm-hmm. piecing the puzzle that was done for 11 years together mm-hmm. in such mm-hmm. a fluid way. Yeah. It was amazing to see it all connect. And, and, and Marvel Studios is known for the masters of connecting the dots. Yeah. Unlike any, and, and not just here. I mean, from. The you know the TV shows on ABC yeah. from the Netflix shows from there. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the cancellations, they still connected them. Uh, yeah. The the TV shows that are now freeform and everything and Agents mm-hmm. of Shield and it's mm-hmm. just just connecting it all together piece by piece. It was just beautifully done, mm-hmm. and you couldn't. They've done with many franchises were not able to do. It. And I'm sorry to tell you, Jedi guys, they. I think they superseded with the uh, what Star Wars has done or we're yeah, attempting to do. I agree. I, I felt like, you know, of the three big things that I was anticipating this year, the end of Game of Thrones, the last yeah. of this uh, Star Wars trilogy, and then Endgame, I was anticipating and looking forward to Endgame more than the other two for sure. And right. if you had told 13-year-old me that I would, you know, care about anything more than a Star Wars movie, I would have told <laughs> you you were crazy. Exactly. Um, but I agree. I think, like... And I think that's a great point that, you know, when you consider that the Russos only climbed on board with Winter Soldier, right? You know, yeah. which was pretty far down the road of the development it's of all still, these. It's still one of the powerhouse movies of all the – if you list them all as oh, far as the top five or whatever, like they were the top ten. Like, absolutely. Most, no, of, them, most of them are going to be the Russos. Sure. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, it, and then I think you're right. Like they did a great job of like reaching way, way, way back – and pulling all this stuff into the movie. I mean, they, the device of, you know, actually visiting some of these storylines allowed them to do some of these interesting things. But when you just think about the staggering amount of actors who appeared in earlier Marvel movies mm-hmm. who are, are no longer at all attached to this franchise, right. who willingly came back oh. and dusted off their old characters. We're definitely going to talk about that, too, because this one oh, is incredible. one in particular that I was so happy to see in this movie. Well, which uh, one? Robert Redford. Oh, amazing. Yeah, totally. I'm ex- I, and completely unexpected. You know, and, and that's going to be one of the things I'm going to bring up on in the later, but seeing, mm. you know, roles like that and seeing all these people just yeah. appear, yeah. Give it, it just gave it, it just made it, gave it so much value. Yeah. It, this movie just, it, it really gave value yeah. to everything that was done before it, paying homage it, to everything yep. that was done before it. And it still managed. You know, despite the fact that so much of the movie really focused on 
those core six Avengers. And then, and then the supporting kind of characters, right? So then there's like Ant-Man and Rocket and Nebula and all these, and you know, Captain Marvel, these other folks, War Machine that that were still active in the current plot, but were not the The main focus. Six main Avengers. Right. But still gave them value and gave them time to shine. Gave them, gave them each individual like story moments that mattered, gave them each individual kind of payoffs. And then they still somehow managed to pull in, the larger cast of newer Avengers and give each one of them. You and, know, you, like, and you had like three hours, so you got three different parts. And that's the way I saw it. I thought three okay. different sections of it. Right. You got the one section where, you know, they they are handling the situation with Thanos. And then you got the second situation where they're trying to, you know, it became a time traveling storyline, yeah. which I thought yeah. they did tremendously well. Yeah, they did All things job. considered. And then you got, job. yeah. And then the third one was like a big payoff. Yeah. Of yeah, the, and, and bringing back the new. It's funny that you mentioned the the you know Lord of the Rings trilogy. The the final section that you're talking about really reminded me of yes you know Return of the King that yeah. that like epic like uh, th- yeah when we get into like our little you know minor complaints or or um, things that we would have changed mm-hmm. I would have just. Honestly, I could have. It was a three-hour movie. Mm-hmm. It could have been three hours and fifteen minutes if they had added fifteen <laughs> more minutes to that final battle scene. Let me tell you something. Yeah, did you manage to possibly time how long that f- that battle was? No, I didn't. I, I I think I've seen some things on Reddit that like calculated or speculated how long it was, but yeah. I don't think it was very long. I, think, I remember. Like, yeah, I remember yeah, like time wise, not long. I yeah, because me and my wife were talking about that on the way back, and I remember mm-hmm. when Civil War came out. Mm-hmm. I timed that one. That the sec- okay. I think the second time I went to the movies to see it, I timed it, and I think it was like 16 minutes. Mm. I want to believe that they kind of did go a little bit longer on it from a standpoint that it started out with five versus Thanos, and then all right. of a sudden the, the horde of his forces came, and yeah. then everybody came in and extended it that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, once again, I, we got to go back to – and I think the second time I'm going to time it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think my only complaint or reservation about it is – and I'll, I'll appreciate this more once it's available on streaming. Yeah. You know, I don't think I was able to look at everything I wanted to look you at. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm seeing like all these little Easter eggs get mentioned now. Yeah. And I think, you know, I perceived how many different obvious characters were, were, were kind of singled out. And I think yeah. I also perceived how many of these little kind of supporting armies came with them. Yes. But, but I don't think like, I don't think it was immediately apparent to me that, my 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 older son claims this that there were multiple Iron Man suits that came through and were battling alongside of Pepper. Now I don't. No, know what the, he saw was actually War Machine in a new suit. Okay, maybe that was it then. Okay, because I I saw that too, and I was like, wait, there's Tony, but mm. then there's Pepper, and then there's another suit that was actually War. That was a Rhodey. Okay, okay. Under a yeah, brand so new like, version of a suit. That that's the part that I want to go back. I want to look, you know, do that thing where you look at other areas of the screen that are not the main action just to kind of see what else is happening in the background because, you know, all the Ravagers were there. And then there were all these, like, you know, sorcerers that came through with Wong. And, like, it's just – it's hard to comprehend. And and to your credit, I did not see the Ravagers there at all. I totally missed out the Ravagers. Was Stallone one of them? I did not notice that. But I did see that, like – I mean, they even have, like, Ravager ships come through the portal. Like Yeah, I saw the the sorcerers and I saw uh, the Wakanda forces. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even manage to see the Ravagers. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think they came in like behind, either behind Quill and and the Guardians, or yeah. they came in behind some other minor kind of you know uh, cosmic character. But yeah. I remember seeing like you know the the alien faces and the Ravager uniforms. So yeah, I mean just like as comprehensive as it was, it's really kind of baffling. Like how many? I guarantee different- you, not one person can tell us right now that they've seen everything because you can't yeah you, no. your eyes can't be widened enough to see <laughs> to really get everything in i saw a uh, a screenshot on reddit that someone captured probably you know illegally but <laughs> uh behind the ravagers when they come in howard the duck is in there <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> yeah it's amazing like, it's awesome. all this stuff is just layered on top and layered on top you remember so you talk about a lot, you know people cashing checks do you know how many people you know how many checks they had to cash for appearances in this movie this yeah, the amount of the amount of cast in this movie had to be over. It had to be in a hundred. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think if you consider like, I mean, did it do a billion the first weekend? Is that what I'm reading? That's what the aim is. And the first yeah. week, I mean, the first day, I think made sixty six mil. 
Yeah, I mean that's it's that's insane. It's, yeah, it's a license to print money on a scale, <laughs> you know, hitherto for unimagined. If you yeah. want to steal a line from Doctor Strange, like, it's, <laughs> it's insane. It is. It's insane. So let's talk about standout performances here, and I'll let okay. you I'll let you lead off with that too because I got a few of them myself. But who do you who stuck out for Ooh. you as you watched it? Oh baby, um, <laughs> I I would say the, the I mean I have to mention Tony Stark just yeah. the Robert Downey Jr.'s performance yeah, absolutely. I I thought um, I was really struck by how honest his performance seemed when he is rescued by Captain yes, Marvel and yes. he's in such a depleted, broken state, you know, yes. and has that that kind of nervous breakdown and is lashing out at at Cap and all that. Like I thought that was like really vulnerable and honest and, mm-hmm. and that's that's how a person would react you know a lot it's, of them a lot of them yeah. uh, went through their own trauma and i love that yeah i agree i think he, he really like i think robert downey jr you know could have stuck to his guns and wanted to have like a stiff upper lip and you know been invulnerable to the stress of all this but i think you know if you go back to like iron man 3 and the ptsd he's yes. doing with that movie like this is very you know i think it's very interesting to depict a superhero as having this inability to process the the stress and and dread of of facing off with Thanos. So I thought which, like which to just me that actually, alone which to me and you and you I credit you to that because they made many people frowned upon that movie but hmm. over the years of the other movies they kind of gave more value to that movie. And that was one I agree. of those moments. I, I think it's I think it is sneaky important in the grand scheme of things, that yeah. movie. Like it's – and I, so I think, yeah, I thought that was amazing. I thought I told – as a father of three, I thought that his you know, relationship building with Morgan was yeah. incredibly well done. You mm-hmm. know, like honest and true to who his character was but still, you know, uh, again, like kind of disarmed and and letting down his guard in a way. Yeah. Um, I felt like – all, yeah, throughout, like the, when he goes through the heartbreaking decision to agree to affect the past and realize that, you know, he puts the existence of his daughter in jeopardy by doing mm-hmm. that was, to, and, then, and then finally, you know, the, the the main payoff, the the full kind of meeting his father and kind of putting yes. those demons to rest. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I didn't realize it at the time, but when that happened, I should have I should have jumped out of my seat and yelled like, I immediately I'm caught gonna it. Die. Yeah. yeah, like. <laughs> So I thought like, you know, it, it, it was for, for for somebody like Robert Downey Jr. that that took a chance on playing Iron Man when no one thought it really had a chance to be successful, you know, X number of years ago. Yeah. And for him to have been at the vanguard of like making these movies and, and appearing in Captain America movies and appearing all over the place and really doing the work to, you know, drive the franchise forward. I felt like, you know, he was given – all the screen time needed to kind of wrap his story up intelligently, and I thought he completely delivered. And not only that, for a guy like you said, I agree. I absolutely agree. For a guy that he's a, he's the he's the greatest story of recovery and comeback you could yeah. ever have. Because his you talk about Robert Downey Jr. in in two thousand or ninety eight or whatever like that. He was going through a lot of demons mm-hmm. during that time. Yeah. And he is a testament of saying you can get through and you can overcome and you can yeah. recover and you can get better. And can you tell a – is there not better story out there for an actor, for a person no. than no, him? I, 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 didn't, I hadn't even thought about that, Dax. Like he, he's had his own personal kind of redemption story. And then, yes. You know, to, to play this role, which is itself another redemption story. You know, mm-hmm. it is this whole I, – I, I love the, um, the connective – kind of device between um you know captain america telling iron man that he's not the one to make the sacrifice play in the first avengers yeah. and then you know how far that character's come i thought yeah i thought i mean a really intelligent um character evolution through you know the whole marvel movie sequence so i, I thought i thought he in particular was just uh, uh just chewed up the scenery in the whole movie yeah absolutely yeah. anybody else that stuck into your mind in this um, I'll let you focus on some of the other major ones. I'll just say quickly that I thought that uh, I thought Paul Rudd did a great job in his yeah. role. I thought that you know he had a lot of interesting, important um, jobs to accomplish, and I thought that he handled those you know really, really well. This this kind of bewilderment of yeah. you know kind of a, an untested superhero, and then him kind of like finding his way in the story. The you know the whole you know calling it a time heist and so much of this being kind of reminiscent of the ant-man movies you know yeah. where like they're sneaking around and all that um yeah 
and I, I like you know Paul Rudd as as like an actor and, and a personality outside of the movies. It was not it was fun to see him, you know. He could have gotten really lost in the the epic battle of all of this, and I thought that that his performance was great. I thought that his character kind of role in this was really fun and exciting. I agreed, and and you're right because they put a lot more weight on him than they did in Civil War. Uh, and making him feel even more important. So by the time if he, I believe he is doing another Ant Man. I don't quote me, but I think so too. I'm I'm not 100 percent certain either, but I, I think you're right. But this, if, if any reason, this would give him a reason to say like, yes, I want to see Ant Man and, and yet another great Ant Man yeah. movie again. So yeah, they did a great. I mean, they, that's the thing. It, it, I feel like when they set all this up, they set everybody up to make sure that there was enough importance of each character that you would want to see them down the line. As, yeah, yeah, I think that there's there's some whiteboard somewhere that has all of this <laughs> stuff mapped out. That, exactly. You know, with with that goal in mind, right? Like, have we have we set a foundation that like people would want to learn more about you know character X Y Z in in subsequent movies? The comic book algorithm was implemented very well into yeah. this universe that they created for the movies. It was done so well that like others tried to repeat it i, I th- believe the cw is the only ones that have successfully been using mm-hmm. such a formula and arg- an algorithm to do what they're doing in there too mm-hmm. i don't know why dc films decided to go <laughs> try to do something different from this but yeah. uh, you know you see the results of that it's like just you know go with the flow and yeah, but yeah. i agree with you um i 100 percent you've said everything that could be said about Robert Downey Jr. I totally agree. And he, in fact, he was my first pick as well. Okay. Uh, Chris Helmsworth also, I would <laughs> yeah, give him yeah. the, also the credit because it, AKA the big Thorbowski. Oh, so good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. I, you got to give him credit because over the years he was the Thor that we understood from the comics, but mm-hmm. Chris Helmsworth has assimilated his own self into this role yeah. and making it a very humanized version of thor because i was not a thor fan in the com- reading the comics mm. i felt like the comics were completely boring to me and i wasn't I don't think anybody was yeah well, no I, I, no I, I know a person who is a fan of thor and really? was really down with the shakespearean-esque type yeah. of you right. know dialogue that was whenever they i've read the books and they changed the font to like yeah. a very you know almost like a, um a uh, calligraphy style of font. Yeah. It's like, oh, this just is coming off yeah. very. I, I, you know, Thou was very bored with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree entirely. <laughs> Until he mixed up with other characters like Spider Man yeah. or or Cap or whatever. But yeah. they managed to make him such a loving character in these movies yeah. that you kind of want to give a pass to the books and just you'll be able to give a my a different perspective of him in the books now. But yeah. this one again. Much like Tony, he had his own traumatizing situation, and you know they dated back to him not taking Thanos out the right way. And right. when we got a chance to see it, and how he still feels that he was he was full of hurt and regret because he didn't do it the right way the first time, and they couldn't. He felt that there was no opportunity to, to um, get it back, and how he handled himself. He let himself get overweight, and. I was just, it just it was just awesome the way he portrayed himself. I mean, he was still Thor, but he was just a a broken Thor. Yeah, at yeah, this it point. was really shocking. Um, but but I agree with you. I felt like it was very kind of true to what the character might have experienced and how human and and assimilate how he much assimilated to the Earth ideology as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I kind of identified with all of that. Yeah, I mean the. All of it, all of it, all of it. You know, the fact yeah. that they're playing Fortnite, the fact that, like, <laughs> he's got, like, these two, like, hangers on friends that yes. just, like, are, you know, moping around with him and don't even realize that he's, you know, the only one, like, Valkyrie obviously realized that he was in a bad place. But I think the, I, just having, like, those kind of um, enabling friends that are there to eat your pizza and play your video games, <laughs> like, is the two. so good. I love And the then name. even, like, once he comes get ropes back into the Avengers kind of storyline, you know, he's still, you know, so messed up, wearing the sunglasses, sleeping and like – and, and hell, then, always just wanted to drink his pain yeah. away. <laughs> and then he chickens out, you know, this this whole like – I thought that was very like honest that, mm-hmm. you know, in this moment as, as 
broken as he's been, right. when faced with this opportunity to deliver, you know, he totally chickens out and leaves Rocket on his own. And, yeah. you know, it takes this pep talk from his mom. To Which, kind by of... the way, yeah, shout out to that, because I didn't add that onto my favorite scene, um, mm. you know, moments. But Rene Russo got more of a talking role in this movie than she's ever did in the time she was in Thor, Thor's yeah. movies. Yeah, she was great. She was absolutely great. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm so glad they brought her back too. It was really yeah. awesome that you yeah. could get that moment with her as well. So again, another payoff moment, like uh, Tony and uh, Howard too, as well. Hundred percent. So uh, Bradley Cooper was possibly the other big comedy moment. Of course, Rocket had some of the best lines of this movie. I yeah. thought it, you know he he was very subtle. But he yeah. was there, and he sometimes took on a leadership role as well. So yeah. I thought that was really cool. Mark Ruffalo as Professor yeah. Hawk. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It was what, so amazing. I mean, great effects, like the the CGI work they did. Did you see how they um, like have him half green, but there was a little hint of human uh, yeah, I, tone. I, I, and I thought that the like you know the the size and dimension was kind of like more proportional to a normal human yeah. and not quite as you know ballooned out as as the original Hulk design yes. from you know Avengers was like they they and then just the way that they were able to like motion capture Mark Ruffalo's face in all of this was baffling like just I was, incredibly I was also like, at all <laughs> oh, yeah i mean like, I, i'm usually very sensitive to when that uncanny valley crops up and i struggle to you know see past like the makeup effects or the yeah. cgi effects or whatever um but but i thought that like the the way that they you know designed and and managed his appearance was was com- you know completely in- engrossing like like it really was um very, very, very convincing. And also, like, with him, it, I don't know if you remember uh, reading in the 90s, in the comics in the 90s, but, you know, they with the transition and f- yeah. merging of the Gray Hawk and the Green Hawk to Banner, yep. making yep. him this. This is kind of that situation, but without the Gray Hawk. Yeah, yeah, this is like that that Dale Keown era. Yes, uh, which was great. I mean, that was one of my one like we probably I was I was like right the right age for that to come out when that came out. Um, and that's I think actually funny, you know, interestingly enough, that is exactly when Infinity Gauntlet came out too. He actually like, and he did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like in that comic, the Hulk is wearing like the jumpsuit. Yes. When he's and up it, on the roof. But that's the yeah. thing too. It was like we got a bit of we got a bit of the '90s. We got a bit of the new era. And yeah. all culminating into this one universe, which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he yeah. assimilated all that perfectly and fluid, fluidly. Yeah. Like I mean, it was just amazing yep. to see. It. I got to give Karen Gillan also much credit mm. uh, and her role as Nebula because she had this was probably the biggest role she's had as this yeah, character. Right? That's that's. I didn't think about that. You're right. That this is definitely the most screen time I think she's had in any one of the movies she's been in. And we got to see so much of her character now in this, yeah. whereas everything was just like she was a bad guy, she was yeah. evil, but did she has some little bit of comedy moments as well, but she yeah. was just dangerous. But here, we got yeah. to see her personality so much come out of here, and she was yeah. able to get the time in to really show her character, to really get her a chance to think of all of the moral and ethical moments mm-hmm. that she was taking, and got to see herself Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, in that type of way. And I mm-hmm. loved how they did that when her going back in time and how the this was smartly done this, for her to go back in time into the time where she her other self was in. But they're mm-hmm. sharing the same networks. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was it, smart. I never would have thought of something. Nah, like, that's awesome. Yeah. I think that's that was a, it was a fun Unex- like you know, they didn't anticipate. They got the that. same IP address, so they're able to share yeah. the yeah. same things. Yeah, you that know, was from, great. from an IT perspective, I mean, like somebody, <laughs> as a person who you know worked in, uh, who had his has a degree in web development. Yeah, I was looking at like that is freaking awesomely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah agreed. <laughs> you know, from a logical standpoint, yeah. who's to say that that can't work? That that wouldn't yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, and, so, I, and I thought she did a great job too. I agree with you entirely. I felt like you know, given given the opportunity to to do you know what she could do with the character in this movie, I thought that her performance was really great. And also seeing her with Tony at the very beginning play football. Yeah, I thought, and I thought like you know, her kind of like you know, putting him in the the seat, you know, kind of tenderly, like this that guy's gonna die. That like, was beautiful. Just yeah, subtle, like, really great moments like yeah. that. I agree. Uh, yeah. And of course. You can't, lastly, but surely not least, Josh Brolin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh I agree. Brolin came in, like, like he wasn't there 
for like the mostly for the first hour, but when he makes an appearance, it reminds me of Jeffrey D. Morgan on in The Walking Dead when he plays mm. Negan. Because mm-hmm. you, when he makes his appearance, it the aura is felt. Yeah. And you no, know and you know things are about to kick off really hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that my my 14 year old kind of made the remark afterwards that, you know, it was like you almost, you know, you like Thanos as a character almost, you know, like yeah. you appreciate him as a character. And yes. that's because they did a lot of hard work to develop his character. You know, you have an emotional investment in Thanos and you, you know, like you don't agree with his the 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 means to his ends, yeah. but they did a good job of describing his motivations. They did a good job of like developing his relationship with, you know, Nebula and Gamora. Mm-hmm. They, you know, he's a fully realized character and very and humanistic, that, and that, that is the Marvel yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, and everything that happens with him then has a lot of weight and meaning. So you mm-hmm. know, when when you know the in the beginning, like I, I did pay attention to timing. One thing, which was, I looked at. You know, my movie start time was one o'clock. Yeah. I think I looked at my phone again to see that the previews were over at like roughly like 108 and the right. movie started in, in general. Right. And Thanos, Thanos buys it in 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> it's like it's 20 minutes into it. I'm like, OK, OK. Like, I see what's going to happen now. Like, this right. is this happened very quickly. But even when that happens in, in the beginning, um, it's just it's it's massively impactful. Like, it's it just is like. Yeah. And it's like, okay, they, it just can't be the exact payoff. So, you know, something else is going to be coming yeah, 100%, next. Yeah, 100%. And you're really now more intrigued to say, like, okay, what yeah. next? They just yeah. killed off the guy who possibly could, but he says nothing could go, oh, how are they going to get to this point? And yeah. they did. They did yeah. very well. So, I yeah. mean, kudos to, the, to those guys. And, and that's not taking anything away from all of the performances, but. When you talk about the standouts, to me, that was the ones that stood out. But, like, everybody, yeah. small or big role, did a phenomenal job, and it, everybody meant something to this movie. Yeah. You know, it was just not one of those – it wasn't really one of those cases. But these, I believe, were, to me, the characters that helped drive the movie along to help everybody else get their shine as well. So, um, favorite scenes or moments? What was out there that stuck out for you on that note? All right. So the one thing I was going to mention was kind of an obscure scene, which was the when they recreated the elevator fight scene from Winter Soldier. Yes. <laughs> and then, you know, Cap's able to kind of talk his way out of it rather than fight his way out of it. I thought like that's one of my favorite movies. That's maybe my favorite scene in that whole movie. I think so everybody's them, favorite scene. It, it, oh, I man. was waiting for like, him to say the line when he got in the elevator. Too. I was so good. Like so. So for me, that was like kind of a deeper cut. But I thought that that was one of my favorite moments. And I thought like, you know. In the in the the setup of time travel and them kind of moving in and out of the past movies, I thought that was you know one of the more you know elegantly constructed scenes that that kind of like you know worked its way back into the old movie, but still advanced the plot of the current movie. So I liked it for all those reasons. Absolutely, which was I believe was like the second hour. Probably, I think that's that's like that's deeper into the movie. They're like they're well into the the time heist at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else that stuck out? I mean, the 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 payoff at the end where, you know, Thanos has now kind of defeated Thor and Cap and Iron Man and Captain America, you know, is the only one left. And and even before, like there's there's other obvious, you know, moments in this whole scene. But I thought the scene where Captain America is kind of standing standing by himself and all of Thanos's army is kind of, um, you know, assembling behind him. Yeah. Before, before you know, on your left happens and all these other guys turn up. Just in that moment, I thought was <laughs> like just you felt like you know the stakes were as high as they were in that scene. So that was that was another one. I mean, I have a couple more, but but I'll let you. I don't want to steal your thunder. I'll give you a chance. To, <laughs> no, to but I tell you what, a few we, of yours. You, I don't want to walk on your line. No, 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 you're fine. But um, did you not think that that was the moment that he was going to be di- he was going to die? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I thought like it, it seemed pretty impossible to imagine how he'd work his way out. Of I knew the first one. Four. We all knew one of the two were going to pass. We're going to die in this movie. Yeah, and I, 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 if you had made me wager, I would have bet the other way, frankly. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I felt like the the stakes were certainly that high at that moment. I thought it was very possible due to the fact that if you've read the Infinity Gauntlet comic book, it was kind of known that you know Tony, I'm like Steve, went out like a soldier would, and like he got 
Yeah. Back he got backhanded by Thanos with the Infinity Call in his hand. Yeah. So yeah. I was waiting for that type of scene, but also I didn't realize that this is Marvel. And yeah. they tend to keep things very secretive. And when you think one thing's going to happen, they're going to go another direction because it's their universe, not yeah. these, not the uh, six one six universe per yep. se. So I, I totally loved it. But yeah, that moment to me, man, um, that was my cry. That was like that was my man up cry moment right there. Well, I had I had one of those. I'll I'll tell you what mine was in a, in a second. But I want to hear what your other gotcha. like best moments. All were. right, so I'm gonna run to, try to run this down as All quickly right. as possible. But um, seeing Tony. Like you said, seeing Tony skinny, frail, and malnourished yeah, from yeah. being in amazing. space after all that time, it made so much sense, and I'm glad. I never thought that, that, that you know, honestly, they didn't have to do that. Agreed. But it helped yeah. make it feel like a real situation. It felt yeah. logical as all hell that, yeah, he's yeah. been in space for all this time after that, those events. They're about to die. Yeah. yeah. So Tony, I don't know if that was a CGI thing or was, did he really lose a lot of weight for that role for that yeah. one scene? But oh my goodness! And then yeah, like you said, when you were talking about that, he was really frantic and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. traumatized, and mm-hmm. you know, saying like, "I told you this was going to happen." And then Steve followed by yeah. like, "Yeah, I told you this was going to happen too." But yeah. you see how that went on your side. Yep. Thing. So they kind yep. of both was like right and wrong at the same time. Yeah, it was a great moment. Um, seeing. Hawk meet up with the ancient one. Mm. Didn't think I was going to see her in this movie at all. And to see her not only in this movie, but to see them have an actual scene and moment. Yeah. Because I loved her in Doctor Strange. Yeah. I thought she did absolutely fantastic. And to see her back, you know, it was just so great. Yeah. So I love that moment. Seeing some of the characters from the past, like Alexander Pierce, like you said, Robert Refford. Robert Refford. We got to talk about this because Robert Refford is. I was talking to um, your um, your uh, my wife's client, your neighbor Angie. Oh yeah, last yep. night because she watched our dog while we okay. went to go nice. see him. Uh, nice. Finny doors, and I told her I'm like, because she didn't know anything about this to, to an extent. She's always glued into her work and everything, but I told her like, you know, there was a lot of actors in there. Robert Refford was one of them, and she was like, mm. whoa, really? Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised that you would be surprised at it because 1980s Robert Refford, if you told him that he oh, yeah. he was going to be in a comic book movie, he would be like, no, that is not, I'm never going to be in that. It's going to ruin my career. Oh, Michael Douglas too. Same. Michael thing. Douglas too. A lot. Yeah. There's so many. Angela yeah. Bassett. Let's talk about yeah. that. Angela Bassett, yeah. who denied the part of playing Storm on the X Men. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> she had. She didn't have. She didn't have like a line in this. She appeared in this, but didn't even That's have like any need. spoken dialogue. Yeah. Look, her or her is Angela yep. Bassett. <laughs> yeah. 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 But not even. But not only that. But like even when she was in Black Panther, you know, it was like she gets it now, because yeah. back then she she easily and still to this day can really easily play the role of Storm. Oh yeah, yeah. She's kind of ageless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, it's just like, but she didn't see it. She was right about that time in the 2000 yeah, yeah, yeah. when yeah, it was agreed. like, no, nah, I don't think that's going to hurt my career. But yeah, then Holly Berry yeah. took it over and was like, damn, I could have did that better. <laughs> well, I, think they, I think they see that like these are, you know, intelligently made movies. You know, they may be sourced from comic book material, but But when you see the script not, and how yeah. it's well written and how the yeah. Russo's, I mean, Alexander Pierce was a perfect part for Robert Redford. Yeah. Totally. And I felt that his presence changed the game for comic book movies because he's such a well respected actor. Yeah. In Hollywood and has done some really yeah. monumental roles. Yeah. I mean, you think about like Anthony Hopkins. Yes. Like, there are people that have, pe- have appeared in these movies that are, you know, Hollywood Oscar, royalty. Oscar winning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, hundred percent. And to see him back as Alexander Pierce is sh- I absolutely yeah. it, it, it warmed my heart because that was one of the biggest. That was one of my favorite actors in that movie. Yeah, he was great because of what he brought to that movie yeah. and made it and really stepped the game for um, Winter Soldier and and in Marvel Cinematic Universe just for him being in there. I, I don't think people understand the importance of that. Yeah, in there, um, Agent Sitwell. <laughs> see yeah. him back in because we knew where where he was sitting. At. He was part of yeah. he was part of the uh, Ages of Shield story yeah. as well as the Winter Soldier story, and yep. you know he was the connection to that. Frank yep. Grillo back as Crossbones, and yep. like you said, Steve, in it. and then see, seeing Steve remember this situation, but changing yeah. the game by saying Hell Hydra. Yeah, so good. <laughs> it was so awesome. And yeah, a, was awesome. I, I was hoping that it was kind of a shout out to Gary Shandling. 
Well, and I, I, I felt that way too. I felt like it's a, you know, it's, it's a shame obviously that they couldn't do that for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, but I thought, like, too, it was kind of a nod to the comic book storyline where yes. Cap is, you know, a Hydra agent. So I thought, like, Absolutely. you know, they, they found ways to pay dividends in a lot of areas. I've seen, yeah, there's there's many parts in the movie where you see both homage to both the comic books in that, too. Yeah. And we'll talk about another one, too, because this is a big one when you talk about um, Tony Scott and Steve talks about America's ass. That was hilarious. So good. <laughs> Just I agree. Moments. Again, hilarious. that was, um, you know, a Rudd really being Rudd. Yes. Being Paul right. Rudd. And, and they, they allowed Paul Rudd to be Paul Rudd in this movie. I loved it. Yep. Um, Tony having moments with his father, like you mentioned. Yep. And seeing Jarvis. Yeah, that was hilarious. That was I don't, like. I don't know if you ever watched the Peggy Carter TV series. I was aware of it, and I was aware that that actor played. You know, he, a butler named Jarvis. He so was. Like, he was the. Jar he was the Jarvis from yeah. there, and you know the younger version of um, Howard Stark, which is now the guy who plays him, Preacher. Yeah. You know, he was in yeah. that show, too. So, I mean, to see the original Jarvis from that show yep. also paid homage to that show. And I was like, yeah. that is awesome. Yeah. Um. Again, and of course, apparently the last cameo we will see of Stan Lee. Yeah. But played uh, as a younger version. And I don't I'm not sure about this. I don't know about this part, but there was a stunt double. Mm. That was playing a role. So I don't know if they used his body, but have Stan's face on there. Right. But looking that, like I, the 1970s version of Stan. I feel like you might be right. That, that was my kind of first impression when that happened was certainly his voice, but perhaps like a stand in actor and, and his face kind of CGI. I forgot what the it, actor's so. name is, but they, there is a guy who's credited as the young Stan. OK. Um, But I, I don't know if he was like the stunt double or whatever of gotcha. that. But. For God's sakes, he that was 1970s Stanley with yeah, the hair and everything. I yeah. loved it, yeah. but I also loved the car that said "Enough said." <laughs> yeah, yep. Yep. that was awesome. Yeah, that so, was pretty um, good. Yeah, and and a cameo and another note on that note, uh, cameo to uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, who made an appearance. She, if you don't know who that is, she actually mm. it, you've never watched Community. She was uh, oh, she, yeah, she was the black actress that was on Community. And Ken Jeong was in this too. Yes, I, you know what's yeah. funny? I looked at IMDb and saw that, and I was like, yeah. "I totally missed him." Where yeah, was he, was he at? The, he was the security guard at the storage space where Ant Man's van was locked up. Oh, you know, I did not, I did not notice yeah. that was him. I did that not. Was, realize he didn't have a line. He didn't speak, but it was him. It was great. Uh, that was absolutely awesome. But that was they're paying homage to community. Yeah, totally. As and they, well. they, find, they find interesting ways to do that in lots of their movies. I'm really surprised Donald Glover didn't make an appearance because he made an appearance in Homecoming. He did because he, he was the prowler apparently. Yep. So that's uh, I was really surprised he didn't find his way in there. But, but yep. it was really cool to see those cast members in there, or even Chevy. Yep. <laughs> to yeah. that extent. <laughs> but um, and then we got the greatest battle in all yeah. of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I, let me yeah. try to break this down as much as possible. Seeing Spider Man yeah. come back, hugging Tony. Amazing. Very because I mean you saw earlier in the movie that was one of his oh, biggest yeah. regrets. That was his only regret. I felt like that was the thing. That was the thing that tipped him into you know action was his regret about peter so to and see it, that again making spider-man really so much more important in this in this yep. uh in this universe yep agreed but so much so because i mean that's the funny thing about that was that we saw that scene back then and then you know he has his daughter but then mm -hmm. he's seeing what i believe he felt like it was his son yeah his surrogate kind of son i agree entirely. yeah so yeah. it was really interesting that he was kind of torn between those yep. two grounds right there. Yeah. And somehow still managed to get both in a yeah. sense. Yeah. But, you know, getting that moment to see him hug, that was awesome. Black yep. Panther and the Wakanda tribe coming back. Well, I, I thought, too, when Black Panther's like, Clint, give it to me. And then he takes off running with the gauntlet. Yes. Like, they, they found a couple. They found a couple of moments to acknowledge how important Black Panther is as a character in the grand scheme of things. As well as Dr. This. Strange and the Sorcerers as well. Yeah, I agree. I, agree entirely. I, I mean, again. I'm I'm telling you now, this scene, like you said, the moment that Tony was alone, he was about to face it, and it, I, it seemed like he was about to bite it. And yeah. to see everybody come out, yeah, that that yeah. was the moment I couldn't hold it. Yeah, I, they, they, my breathing changed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad it was dark as hell because, and apparently, yeah. my wife said the guy next to us started crying. <laughs> so good, that's so amazing. I couldn't contain myself. It was just. I remember the last time I actually felt like that. It, I was a kid in 1984, five maybe. The Last Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> there was some scene in there where Bruce Leroy was like, and they were in a club, and all the yeah. kids, all his, his entire crew started coming out to fight all these other guys, yeah. and it felt like that moment. And yeah. 
I'm actually tearing right now just talking about it. It was, no, like, no. It were, was were, so great. There were two moments in that battle scene where the theater I was in erupted into applause. What yes. were So what do you think they were? I'm sure you know what one of them is. I think just seeing the crowd, just the, the army come out and seeing Black Panther. Well, from, that was ours. Okay, cool. Um, I I cheered heavily when Spider Man came out. I was like, even yeah. though I knew that he's obviously coming back from far from home, yep. far from home, but that was one. Yeah. But they also having seen um Okoye, Valkyrie, Sherry, Pepper Potts, and Scarlet Witch surround Spider Man. That was one of them. When when all the women fought at the same time, yeah, um, the theater went nuts. Like yeah. just the fact that like when once people started to realize what was happening because they did a version of this in Infinity War. Yes, where like Okoye and Scar and uh, Black Widow and Scarlet Witch all fight together. But mm-hmm. like once people in the theater started to perceive that it was like all the female characters, yes. there was like this like spontaneous round of applause and cheering that happened. Yeah, and and then oh yeah, go ahead. When Cap picks up the hammer. There you go. That was my other one, too. Absolutely. Big payoff because that yeah. dates back way, way back to of uh, uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah. And you didn't think about this. That uh, Surprisingly, that never came to my mind. Me personally, that never came to my mind of that actually happened. First of all, the fact that he got um, the hammer back. Right, right. <laughs> it was yeah, awesome. so good. But the yeah. other thing is that he gave it to Cap. Yeah. That, to yeah. me, was absolutely fantastic as well. And Great payoff. Again, great, great payoff. payoff in connection to that. And 100%. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He beat the living crap out of Thanos with that hammer. Yeah, the, the way himself. that he was using the shield and the hammer in combination was really cool. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. such a great scene. I mean, yeah. and, and also, I mean, just overall, this was our vision. of If you're a comic book fan of Marvel throughout the years and you've seen – you read epic, you know, books like this where it is, whether it was Secret Wars, whether it was like Infinity Gauntlet, whether it was Civil War, and you got to see in the comic books from the panels, these mm-hmm. big panel moments mm-hmm. where you see a widespread two page mm-hmm. war come out. You're seeing this come to life for the first time. Mm-hmm. It's so inspiring to see. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh my God, the pages are coming to life in front of you. Thank you, Stan, Steve, and yeah. Jack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's like, it, it, I think it's a great analogy. I hadn't thought of it quite in those terms of like a you know comic book two page spread where you have like all of that epic detail. That that's kind of my only frustration with that scene was. Mm-hmm. Like I am desperate to press pause and see what the <laughs> hell is going on in those in those wide shots, right? Yeah. Like it's just like, and I will like once once I have it digitally, I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll I'll luxuriate through that. Yeah. But yeah, it did remind me of like when I was a kid, you know. So I'm 44. Yeah. I was 10 years old in '85 when right. Crisis on Infinite Earths came out. Yeah, oh, okay. And yeah. was exactly the right age to fall in love with George Perez and oh, yeah. these like intricate, you know, two page spreads he would draw all the time. Like this really did feel like that. Yeah, man. It, yep. whew. And to yeah. me in my, yeah. And it, technically didn't he work on the affinity gauntlet too? He did. He was the artist on, he on was the, artist. Well, for, for the first few issues yep. and then Ron Lim came in and did it as well. Yeah. So it was like seeing all of the cosmic, yep. you know, uh, legends yeah. art come to life. Yeah, you know Arthur yeah. Adams at some point as well. You're like, <laughs> yeah, we got to but see Arthur, a little yeah. bit of his style. Yeah, he's he's in a whole in my mind. Adams is in a whole category by himself. He's my I am he's so my glad favorite. I got I got a chance to meet him and I got him to sign a book for me. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I'm very Arthur jealous. Adams is, is, God, yeah. uh, him, Jim Lee, and uh, Rob Liefeld, and uh, not Rob mm-hmm. Liefeld. Well, I, you know, what? I'm probably one of the only people that credits Liefeld. I got a friend of mine who feels the same way as you do. He credits Liefeld with, if nothing else, especially um, seeing when you see some of these steroid guys today, it's like. Well, he, my, they, I think there's there's a group of people out there that owe him a debt because he kind of pulled them into comic books at a young formative age. We wouldn't enjoy Deadpool if not for him. Yeah. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think and, t- and, 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 and you got Tom McFarlane too. I mean, you got these guys yeah. who really, yeah, stepped the game in the '90s and, yeah. and, and and testament to the '90s. How is it that we're still? Like Marvel's having a hard time coming out with really great stories. Meanwhile, their greatest stories are being told in the cinema. Yeah, with the exception yeah, I, with the exception of Civil War. No, and I, I took my son to the comic book store. My my younger son, my eleven year old. Yeah, to the comic book store just like a week or so ago, and and it was hard. Like it was hard to perceive what was going on in in the comic book rack yeah. generally speaking. And and you know there's an opportunity that Marvel publishing has right now. 
to completely hook my 11 year old by, you know, building a comic book universe that's, you know, more acknowledges the movies and takes advantage of all these people that are, you know, this is my son, Star Wars. You know, he cares about it that much. Yeah. And it's when you when you look at the comics on the wall, it's incomprehensible. Like it's it's hard for him to dig into any corner of it because they've decided to market a lot of the books towards, you know, 40 year old dudes that have collected comic books for 20 years or 30 years. So, yeah, it's a shame. I think that there's a, a massive missed opportunity with Marvel publishing. They should just have a Marvel Cinematic Universe series of books currently that, that you I know, agree. You know, I agree that, to this that point. story in that world. I agree to this point because the deal is, is like I've read recent Marvel stories. Yeah. Uh, Civil War Two was like one of the last ones that okay. I really read and Secret Empire I couldn't get into. But yeah. I felt they dropped the ball in their writing as far as their yeah. actual comic book writing. DC, I felt is, is way stronger in their storytelling this time around. But one, one of my biggest pet peeves about the comic books at the time, and I don't know where they're at now, and I'm hoping they – I felt like they were going through a transitional uh, mm. s- uh, you know, era right now as far as the comic book publishing because mm. it wasn't as nearly as strong as the storytelling in the movies. And yeah. a lot of that was because they're basing their stories at the time when they really did have some really good storytelling uh, yeah. and then managed to make you know mold some of the best of the past and present into, their, uh, into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. But – I felt I feel like some of the storytelling in the recent, you know, writing is mm. a little bit convoluted. Yeah. Well, the the one thing there's there's one more moment from Endgame mm. that was my like choke back the tears moment that I thought was actually um interestingly close to the comic book storyline, yeah. which was when Cap gives Sam his shield. There yeah, there you go. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, like legit like tears running down my cheeks when that happened i cheered so hard for that and i probably was the only one because i might i don't know if everybody was invested just into the marvel cinematic universe but i was invested into the comic book universe and when that when sam got the shield and the books you so you read the book so you also know about the controversy that came along with absolutely absolutely and i thought and, and to be frank I thought that was one of the most underappreciated eras of Marvel comic books when yeah. Sam was Cap and and there was a female Thor yeah. and yes they were taking all these amazing chances. Miles Morales was in the main universe. Miles like, was the only one that really survived out of that out of the new transition. It still is yeah, I, one of the most popular I, new characters out there. I thought that was a really exciting like year or two in Marvel Comics when they when they experimented with all that stuff and and laid all those really kind of daring bets and I, yeah and there was all of that obnoxious you know feedback and uproar Let's about be real. I mean know, it was a lot of racist absolutely. Under, overtone because absolutely. of the idea and I I read this so many times when this happened that's yeah. not my cap Ugh, whatever whatever and, like, and, and you know it didn't help either because one of the biggest problems and this is the other problem that i had with the books that mm. pissed me off the new characters that they had in these books miles morales the champions mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. sam wilson yep. thor yep. the problem that they didn't have that they that they had with all of these characters that i felt with the exception of like i said miles morales was the only one that really shined big time and, and help and uh, into the spider verse really helped this. Yeah. No <laughs> helped that character Absolutely. out as well. Me, like yeah. it was official when that show, when that movie got an Oscar, it yeah. really put, it's like, there's no way they're going to stop. Mess, uh, yeah. Miles. Um, but the, one of the biggest things that I felt was missing from the new characters, you can make a great protagonist without having a even bigger, better antagonist. You took the words right out of my mouth. I feel exa- that is exactly what was wrong with Sam that Wilson era. did not have anybody Agreed. to combat him. Agreed. The champions, I think they did at one point, and I love the champions. I love the champions. I think they did it. I think they have a they have legs to stand on, but they need yeah. a new antagonistic group of people to have. Hundred percent Thor as well. I mean, even 100%. Miles to some extent, but Miles yeah. has managed to be able to get over by beating up some of beating up easily some of spider-man's biggest foes no i thought that they, they had this like amazing team of avengers created with you know this new Cap. millennial style of avengers that are making change and seeing some real value in the, in the world 
And the villains in the comic books were ridiculous. Yeah. Like, at least redesign these old Marvel villains to be more contemporary or like. Or no, just create new ones like they normally do. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought, I thought I agree entirely. I felt like as amazing as it was to see, you know, and the art was was the, the, the line of artists that they, they assembled. Yeah. To launch those series, yeah. and and then the way that they redesign these characters, especially and, uh, my, again, Miles Morales, Sarah Pacelli, or just like, and there's like a Korean Hulk, and yeah. there's yes, like, all, all of Amadeus these things, is awesome, <laughs> so amazing, and then I, I felt your entire, and I felt like, frankly, outside of Spider Man and outside of the X Men, Marvel has always struggled to have like really interesting villains like Mm -hmm. there's a whole generation of kind of lame-ass villains that come out of like the 60s and 70s like the wrecking crew and like who gives a shit like there's just a lot of like lame 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 villains agreed you know kind of populating the marvel universe and i thought that that was i agree with you entirely and we're, we're we're way into the weeds in this but i think that that was the biggest wasted opportunity of all of that was like well when it comes to sam should've... wilson though the other problem i had was that they kept making him street level if you yeah. read the storylines with that it was like when is he going to face a adversary that's as big as the red skull or as yeah, big as exactly. you know crossbones exactly. or whatever like that and really make Sam come out the bigger deal, and they never did. He just yeah, all of his all of his stories that I read from Sam's Captain America run yeah. was just him in street level trying to be the civil rights leader. Yeah, and and struggling to kind of live up to the mantle of Captain America. Like they, right. they I think they oversold That's how hard exactly it was. Exactly right. It was like, you know, like he's been doing this for a long time. Like he's not a teenage superhero that's figuring this stuff out. This <laughs> right. is a grown man. Like I think they, they would have been better off if they had moved him more confidently into the role. And I agree. I agree with you entirely. They I agree that have... they should handle the issue of that. But then yeah. just after a few issues, just go into something totally different and yeah. find a way to make him worthy in the eyes of everybody. And they, right. I think and, they dropped right. the ball heavily on that. But seeing right. him, seeing this happen in the movie, it really yeah. showed me that they stuck to their guns despite the controversy, the 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 um, the comments, the negative comments online. Yeah, the yeah. same way that they did with um with Miles Morales because Miles Morales was created. By, I forgot who created him, but he moved to DC Comics as well. Oh, Brian Bendis. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Brian yeah. Bendis created him with yeah. the idea because his daughter and his son yeah. and uh, yep. his kids are yeah. um, multi multicultural. Yeah, yeah. And he wanted them to see a character see him in the limelight, and successfully yeah. he did through yeah. Miles Morales. Yep. Yeah. And somehow, some way, they were make they were able to make Miles Morales a household name. Now, yeah, they still needed to do that with. With the rest of them. No, and I, I was legit concerned in that moment that Sam was going to talk to Captain America first, mm-hmm. and then their little scene would be over, and then, and he then would Bucky turn would come to, along. Yeah, he would turn to his like longer time friend and give him the shield. Yeah. I was really like, I knew that the mantle was going to be passed. It was obviously in this little package next to him. Like, yeah. what was going to happen was going to happen. Yeah, and I was, I was kind of convinced he was going to give it to Bucky. And I and, like the fact that Bucky also. Agree with this and nodded right. off like yes, yeah, yeah it's you your go. time. Yeah, it was yep. a great, absolutely phenomenal moment. And again, I love. Thank you, Kevin Feige, and yeah. the Russos for writing that moment because it yeah. really stuck to the guns. Is like we're not going to be bullied. Agreed into it. And I, yeah. I, I really, I absolutely. It reminded me that moment to me reminded me when Black Panther, when uh, T'Challa came into um, Englewood, I believe, or Oakland or whatever, and yeah. decided to buy up. All of the like uh, yeah. the houses yeah. to to help yeah. the community. Yeah, that was that that was that moment for me. Yeah. So yeah, that um, was yeah. in in a in a very emotional movie with a lot of beats. That was the one that got me absolutely. And then yeah. also, lastly, Haley Atwell. Yeah, I got to see her back again. I I really hope that this is a way for them to really give that show one more season on Disney Plus. I it, I need to say that payoff. It was such a great series. I think it yeah. it was just it was like really not pushed the way it should have been. I thought she did a tremendous job as Peggy Carter. I thought she was yeah. a revolutionary character yeah. for the series. And to not see them see it, the payoff of her creating Shield to me was like one of the biggest um, yeah you know crimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. to see her back 
with Steve and Steve go yeah. back into time. Yeah. And I knew that was going to happen. The minute that I saw her, saw uh, him go back into time and his seat, I'm like, he's going to go back in time and leave them. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like, you know, story wise, had he not time traveled and seen her and, you know, been able to imagine a world where they could be together, maybe he doesn't, you know, take this chance yeah. and skip his little time. It's always been about her from start to finish. I mean, they had yeah. they they uh, they significantly showed her yes. throughout the entire yeah. all the movies involving yep. him. Yep. Making her still important in this movie, and and we end off the movie seeing him dance with her. Finally, yeah. got that dance yeah. and kiss her. I was like, it was great. You couldn't end it. Could not have done a better movie. Yeah, yeah. I think that they. I agree with you entirely. I feel like you know, there's there was a a, a very thoughtfully constructed character arc for both Iron Man and Captain America that this movie completely put a cherry on top of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's interesting to see like. Where does, you know, the Hulk go from here? Where does Thor go from here? Like, obviously, I think there's a lot more mileage that they could explore on both those fronts. And I hope they do. Like, I do I do hope that, like, you know, I think one of the things you want to talk about, where do they go from here? Like, that is one of the things I I hope that's where they go from here. Yeah, let's segue over to that, because, I mean, we where's there's nothing else that we could be said (laughs) at this point. But, um, yeah, I mean, you talk about that. Where do you want to see next? I mean, we saw Thor go off. With the Guardians, which I'm hoping. I don't know, right? Yeah. Who I'm knows? hoping Volume Three is going to have Thor. In there. That's that's what I was kind of wondering about. Like that'd be cool. I I, I would be into that. If well, that's you got what, to think like, Adam Warlock's going to be involved. Who the hell is powerful enough to handle him? Yeah, I guess you're right, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, my hope is that at some point, you know, I think they have to like, I think they have to dig back into some of these new tent pole characters like Black Panther and Captain Marvel and Spider-Man. Like they, they have to do Captain Marvel two. They have to do Black Panther two. Obviously the second Spider-Man movie is coming out this summer. Um, I think that they are going to want to, you know, in, in introduce a couple of new characters yeah. like Shang Chi and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But I would hope Doctor strange too, as well. Uh, and Doctor strange has a second movie coming out. Fair I would hope to, like, yeah, we still got to see him. I would say like let, uh, two to three years from now, like, not next year, probably, and, and probably not the year after, because their their slate of movies is pretty well established. Yeah. But I don't. I would prefer in like the next wave, like Phase Four should end with the next Avengers movie, and yeah. I think the next Avengers movie should have Black Panther and Captain Marvel and Doctor Strange yeah. and Spider Man and Hulk and Thor. Like I, I would I would like if there was a blend of you know some of these. OG Avengers yeah. with some of these new characters and they had that kind of, you know, combination of both because well, I, I do think that like there's so much value in Hulk and Thor in particular. Yeah, absolutely. I hate to see that go undeveloped. Absolutely. Here's what I fear though. After this Spider-Man movie, we yeah. may not see Spider-Man again as far as Marvel Studios. I believe for what I understand mm. is that they were contracted with Sony to do this one last movie with Spider-Man. Was it? I didn't realize that. Was it for a fixed amount of time? Yeah, because you got to remember, we should never have gotten Spider Man, and I say we like where I'm talking about my own like football team. But, no, but like, yeah, audiences shouldn't have gotten that. The I audience yeah. should never have been able to see yeah. Spider Man in a cinematic universe yeah. if not for that scandal that happened with Sony. Yeah. And because of that scandal, the big payoff, the the damage control of that yeah. was that we got Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. In there, so but they were the other thing too is like. Um, the Spider-Man movies, they're not getting any box office money from the success of those movies because Sony's getting that. But they're getting the merchandise right. So I don't know. If I was yeah. Sony, I would still keep on this as long as possible. Well, I think Sony has proven time and time again they don't know what to do with this character. Well, so. it, it, the bad part is because of the success of Into the Spider-Verse, I don't know if there's going to – you know wet their uh, whistle. Or and and if well, like Venom, too. Venom made a ton of money. Yeah, but it didn't get any great reviews. And I oh, it sucked. But God. it made a ton of money. Well, you, you, here's the thing. I think at this time, I think we're educated enough to know that box office sales don't mean nothing. Yeah. It means something but, for that moment. But yeah. the, over, the long haul is the reviews. Because, yeah, you can make that much money on the first haul. Your sophomore time, is no way in hell you're going to make that much money if the first one sucked. Yeah, I agree. I think if... if I mean, so Far From Home comes out this summer. I know that there's already a Venom 2, you know, kind yeah, of on the slate. Yeah. Let, let's say that, you know, Venom 2 does not perform. You know, like it's it's 
so it, you know, again, critically kind of damned and, you know, doesn't make a ton of money. I think that's the best thing that can happen for the future of Spider-Man and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because I think that there's like a whole animated version of Miles Morales that Sony can explore. I think they should make, really stick with that because that was and it's where they were – a ton of money, yeah. and they're they're not going to be vulnerable to actors deciding they don't want to play these parts anymore. They can yeah. always you change know, up the voices. Oh, and they, or they could cast somebody that sounds close enough. Yeah. Like there's so much more interchangeability on the animated front than I there agree. is on the Robert Downey Jr. front. You know what I mean? Like you, it's so I think so. I I, do, I think frankly, yeah, I agree with I that. said this when Spider Verse came out. Like I think Spider Verse poses the biggest existential threat to the Marvel Cinematic Universe because... They got an Oscar. And because and Spider-Verse can exist without celebrity actors. You yeah. don't need these characters to be voiced by, you know, A-list celebrities. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there there's a universe where... Or there, there's a future, I should say, where that technology, that animation style, the passion for that grows so much that it becomes cheaper and easier to make animated versions of these movies with voice actors than it does to like, oh, you know, we're never going to get on the same schedule to get Chris Hemsworth and and Chris Evans and all these people at the same time to shoot this movie. With an animated movie, you get all those people when they're free. You know, you get them for a long weekend. You record all their lines. You go record somebody else three months later. You don't need to, you know, deal with all the the – rigor of of working with real live actors so that's one that's one perspective to take and i that's a valid perspective to take i do want to add to that possibility of having a voice done by a an established actor an Mm award-winning actor does bring a lore like have it like having mahershala ali in yeah, that yeah. movie and, and, and so many other um, you know actors in that movie, I think really did help it. But I agree with you to some extent. And this is one of those things I have when I have like some of uh, interviews with some of the actors who does voices for some yeah. of these movies. And one of, in particular, a friend of mine, Molly uh, Flanagan. Yeah. Um, we talked about it when she was on the show. She's the voice of uh, Naruto, which is a really iconic anime yeah. character. Yep. Um, she said that like sometimes it does help to have established voices. <laughs> Well, more agreed. than celebrity same, voices because sometimes it doesn't like, always work out. But they can go get Mahershala Ali for a week and record all of his dialogue for a full movie mm-hmm. as opposed to him being on set for three months to yeah. physically act this part for three months. So mm-hmm. like I think those kind of celebrity voices are still on the table. It's just like they can record that stuff in a studio that's near their house whenever they want with a good director. Whereas right. like if they're going to go on set and film a Marvel movie – they have to relocate to Atlanta for three months. They gotta like be on set for three months. They really can't participate in another movie for the three to four months while they're shooting. Oh, yeah. Whereas you make if they're point, doing yeah. voice work for, you know, an animated movie, shit, they could do that three days a week and go film something else another three days and yeah. not really have to overcommit. So I think you're right. I, I don't think that there's I think that some of those celebrity casting is still important, but the ease with which they can make these movies now from a production side from a financial is, standpoint too. Oh my God! Like it's so. I, I I think that like I'd be curious to see where where Sony goes from here. Do they do they double down? I know they're making a Spider Gwen movie. I know that they're yeah. making another Miles Morales movie. Like mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see in the next couple of years what what the you know the future holds for. Yeah, uh, but they definitely got their they definitely found their niche. Yeah, I think, and time. they'd be smart to kind of double down on it. So yeah, we'll I see. Agree. Because all these, yeah. you know, separate Spider-Man movies that doesn't have Spider-Man in there is really pissing me off. Like the Silver Sable and uh, yeah. Black Cat movie, I'm not, in, I'm not even remotely humoring no. that. And I'm a Spider-Man fan too. <laughs> and, I, yeah, and I think that they're they're misreading the audience to think that anyone really cares about Black Cat outside of, <laughs> you know, the Spider-Man kind of. That's universe. like having like, Black. You mer- and, and here's the thing. Did you not learn a lesson from the Catwoman only movie? Yeah, totally. They're, they're, they're not <laughs> interesting enough characters to stand up by themselves, you know. Right. And I, 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 I don't know. So we'll see. I, I do think though, like for the for the Marvel movies, like I'm really curious to see how they treat the world building now that they have these other main characters stepping into the into the front. And I'm also curious to see like there's three Disney Plus series now. There's Loki. There's WandaVision and there's which, Falcon by the, way, and the Winter never, Soldier, right? Which, by the way, we never saw Vision at all. Right. So, like, 
I'm curious to see how they pull that off. Is that going to be a flashback series that takes place before Infinity War? Like, has to do with their relationship before his death, or right. do they bring him back? Well, here's the thing. Uh, here's how I believe I predict they could bring him back. Yeah. Suri. Yeah. I, I mean, guess, she like, she ha- she has the tech to do it. Yeah. You yeah. got Mark Ruffalo. You got um Bruce yep. Banner too, who also was partially responsible for creating. And, well, and frankly, couldn't they put the stone back in his head now too? They could, but they also can do it without him too. Yeah, I mean, I think there's both options are on the table, but like the the stone is now like back where it should be. Does that mean it's back in Vision's head? That is a good question. I don't know. But before TBD, but, right, we have, to, we have to see where that goes. I mean, you got to date back to like, yeah, that's a. I mean, it could be a substitute source of his power, and again, that's where Siri and Wakanda comes in because yeah, totally. they have the advanced technology to possibly yeah. do stuff like that. Yeah, and they were heading in that direction in Infinity War. So yeah, remember, because like, she was like, why didn't a, you do yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, there's a world where that exists. Exactly. Yeah. So there, there's a possibly get way, uh, get way to making that happen. Um, yeah. Then you got also, yeah, you, like you said, you also got Sam and uh, – and So is that a Captain America series now? That, oh, that's going to be a great question because now it's like they passed the torch and then also yeah. Winter Soldier, they managed to bond with each other from Civil yeah. War now. Yep, so yep. Yeah, I'd awesome. be, I'd be – I would love to see – that series be, you know, Sam with the shield and the wings yeah. and that in that, you know, a version of that costume with with the Winter Soldier as like yeah. his partner. I would be on board for that. You also remember we got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back in May. So we don't know how this is going to tie in yeah. to all this. And they already already approved for another season extending after that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got Cloak and Dagger. You got the yep. Runaways, which are all connected in the universe as well. Yeah, There's So many possibilities still. We got so much things to go on now. Yeah, I, I do think, though, it's going to be a while before you see anything like the X-Men or Fantastic Four pop up. I think that they had I agree. It's so many Marvel movies in pre-production and ready to rock. Let alone the Silver Surfer as well. Over the next like two to three years, I think it'll be it'll be a little while before they can yeah. even like production-wise schedule time to bring some of those movies and characters into the fold. And so, another one, Riri Williams. Yeah, I mean, that's the door's certainly open for something like that now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, they can another again, another character that I really enjoyed to date. I think that was another one of the characters they enjoyed. Right. But yeah. again, who is she who is she facing up against? No. Yeah, I think like that, that is the one thing, though, that the Marvel movies have done. They have taken these deep cut Marvel comic book villains and made them important, incredibly <laughs> compelling and thoughtful. Like the Vulture. Like, come on. Like. The but into the is, hands of Michael Keaton? Oh my God! Like in the comic books, <laughs> easily one of the most roll your eyes, lamest villains I can remember from my childhood. Right. This old man in a creepy goofball suit who can <laughs> flap his wings. Like no. But the way that they're able to reimagine that has been really. And I tell you, one of my favorite parts of uh, Homecoming was the very scene where Michael Keaton figured out. Yeah. That he was Spider Man because it reminded oh, me yeah. of way back when William Dafoe figured out that. Uh, you know, yeah. Peter was Spider Man, and it, it had that pain. That I felt like they were paying homage to that moment. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I thought, and I thought that was really well done. I thought that, yeah, and I will. I'll, I'll be curious to see now. Here's my question for you. Mm-hmm. So, Spider Man: Far From Home comes out in July. Yeah. Am I to understand, based on the events of Endgame, which now we that, understand why Nick Fury is a part of this and not sure Tony now? But if is it is it now the reality of this new world? That all the people that got snapped disappeared for five years. The world fell into some turmoil during that five-year period. Mm-hmm. And now all of those people that were snapped have returned unaged five years later and been reintroduced back into the world. So in Far From Home, does that mean that MJ and Peter's friends all had to have been snapped along with him so that they return in our high school age like he is? And are they going to exist in a world where they all know that the Thanos – like snapping happens. It's funny like, that you said that because there was the part where Peter and um and yeah. his friend Reunite. got back, reunited. But if you look at his friend's face, it looked very emotional. Well, yeah. So like, was Peter gone? But he wasn't. Were they both gone? Like, no, I, don't, I think I, don't, I think there may have been some. Like you said, some that may have gone and some not. But yeah, you're right. It's, it's but they would be five thing. years older than him now, right? Like, so they're not going to be high school credit, age. Did did um Tom Holland look a little bit older? 
I don't know. I mean, he's he's <laughs> of that age where like you know he's gonna he's gonna visibly age in dog. He looked like he went. He was a little bit taller. <laughs> yeah, he's in his early twenties, right? So like yeah. he's gonna like if they're not making these movies fast, he's gonna go from looking like a teenager to a middle aged guy in the blink of an eye. I don't know if you watch Gotham, but like the kid who played Bruce um, Bruce Wayne, yeah, he. <laughs> He sprouted big time, yeah. like by the next season, yeah. by the final season. I'm like, jeez. Yeah. All you have to do is look at like the Game of Thrones kids, and it's like, yes. you know, if you take your eye off this for a minute, these kids, these young actors, grow up a lot off screen. When you watch so. these shows, you don't realize it until you watch like the first season of these shows to see how young they were back then. Right. Which I think is like why you know if you're smart, you cast someone like Zendaya in this role, who yeah. I think she's. She's not like 16. I think she's probably in her early 20s. No, she's so, in her early 20s, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So like physically, she's not going to grow up that much, despite the fact that you know two or three years time has passed. But yeah, yeah I'll just, I'll be curious to see how they answer those questions in Far From Home because I don't know. I, the, the, my only regret of of Endgame would be one that the Avengers now exist in a world where time travel is possible, which I feel like is a big can of worms to open up what they already did i mean they they you know they did that with the quantum realm now yeah so now they have like hank pym who can make as many pym particles as they want and they have the way shout out to the original uh hank pym moment yeah yeah (laughs) and it was pretty good i mean it was the the cgi and that again was really well done and the cgi with the aged steve rogers was was unbelievable incredible like really believable what they do with that with that with that technology now yeah shocking Shocking. So this yeah, is the only time you could do stuff like this to really make it happen. Like this yeah. is why like James Cameron waited like twenty over twenty years to do Battle yeah. Angel Alita. Yeah. Yeah. You'd never to have be to able to pull this off. Technology to catch up. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to see. So I'll be. It'll be interesting to see in Far From Home. Like, it, 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 I feel like it would have been my preference if in in solving this when when Bruce Banner snapped his fingers and brought back everyone. Yeah. I would have preferred if he brought back everyone and erased everyone's memory uh, of the events of this and like rolled back time five years so that interesting, you know, no one had any really awareness of what happened besides right. the Avengers. I, I would have preferred that, I think, but That's we'll see how they handle it. But then again, also, you got to take note. Casey is older in this generation. So, yeah, you might be right that they've already have transitioned. Yeah. Some of them already have transitioned. Yeah. So I'd be, I'd be curious to see. I think you Birthdays know the, are going to be screwy. In this. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the, the easy solution is going to be that all of the principal characters from Spider-Man were snapped. Yeah. And all missed that time and all come back and are all now relatively the same age, you know, relative to one another. Yeah. Mary, Aunt May and Mary Jane, all these people I, or MJ, I should say, all these people yeah. – had to have been all snapped, had to have all been brought back so that they all are still high school, you know, aged peers of one another and can have this story make sense when it comes out in July. So we'll, we'll see, see. Because, again, yeah. like, I mean, you got to say, like, that would mean Casey would have to go back five years and she wouldn't be as big as she was now. Well, I mean, she could st- I mean, in her case, I think she could stay the five years older age that she is. Because- so you mean some people will be current and yeah. some people will go back yeah yeah okay, i mean that's, that's, honestly i think they that may be the road that they go that's got to be the road that they go right yeah. I mean, that that's how the math adds up with the yeah. way that they solved this so but the, but again like unless they want two characters that are in a relationship to be five years apart <laughs> age-wise anyone that has those kind of connective relationships would have all had to have either been snapped yeah. or not snapped so that those those kinds of relative ages still make sense to one another right well, i'll tell you this I don't have any doubt in my mind they'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they we've questioned stuff like this before. Yeah. And when it when the movie comes up that aftermaths a lot of the events, the big events, yeah. subtly they always find a way to answer that question. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. So I have no problem. But last question. Yeah. We saw we we finally saw the end of this. Out of all eleven years, out of all twenty two movies, mm. where does Avengers Endgame stand with Ooh. you? Oh, that's a tough question. Because um, <laughs> next week, I think I'm going to do like a top 10, and this is going to be hard. I'm going to put up a poll immediately yeah. for our ACMG group on this. I'm really interested to see where they yeah, where no, this movie stand. Idea. That's a great idea. I think I'm excited to see it again tomorrow so that I can maybe have a more have more conviction in my answer to this question. Yeah. But I would say upon first viewing, it's got to be in my – top five top three i mean yeah Yeah. i don't know i i I think i can imagine after seeing it a second time i could imagine where 
this might be, you know, number one overall when, when the dust settles. But, but certainly right now I have to imagine it's going to wind up at least in my top five, if not in my top three, if not, you know, number one overall. How about you? I'm going to say right now, and I did this last year for Infinity War. Mm. I think this superseded Infinity War. Mm. I, and that was the – I agree. Here's the deal. Infinity War – was the one that was like, all right, we finally make it to this point. Ten years in the making. We, yeah. I, I literally went off the minute I saw Thanos in that end credit scene in the first Avengers, and I knew where they were going with this. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way in hell that they would be able to do this. Right. There's no way in holy hell that they would be able to do the Infinity Gauntlet. And yeah. They did it. Yeah. Infinity they War sure made that happen. I was they like, sure holy crap, they managed to and stretch it out for ten years. Yeah. They did it. Yeah, and they did it with the ending as the as a bad guy winning. Yeah, at the end. yeah. How are they going to come back for this? How are they going to beat that? Yeah, they did it. Yeah, ten year, eleven years. Yeah, of this investment into this universe and this journey, yeah. and I came out of there almost hyperventilating. Yeah, it was <laughs> overwhelming. I agree. Yeah, I feel right now. Yeah. Even just seeing it for the first time, I'm going to put it in the number one. I'm going to put Infinity Wars in number two right now for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, as where everything else is going to go, that's where it goes. But just yeah. for the fact that with all the movies that we've seen over the years and all these franchises that we've seen that tried to do trilogies, that tried to do payoffs, yeah. we've seen failures. We see yeah. multiple failures from the X Men universe. We've seen failures from Star Wars, believe it or not, of all yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. We've yep. seen failures. We have not seen really, even in their lowest, even in their, and even in their, what could be possibly considered, I want to say the worst, the least favorite yeah. of their movies, we saw success and transition and connection and, and value. Yeah. And with it, with the payoff from all of that culminating here and them able to connect all the movies together and pay homage to them, there's no way I can say that this is not the number one. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, like I said, I, I think, I suspect I'm going to feel the same way. Like, I, mm -hmm. I, I do think it's just I'm still buffering. Like I'm yeah, still just exactly. Kind of like I mean, there's a lot to take processing. in. I am going to invest in seeing it again. Absolutely. I will tell you this. I am nerdily already, though, looking forward to this time, whatever, maybe holiday season yeah. this coming year, where you, you could conceivably sit down and watch both Infinity War and Endgame <sighs> back to back in a marathon session. Beautifully. In, in, in 4K in five hours. <laughs> 4K. Yeah. That would be – that. I, I am kind of looking forward to that. So, I tell yeah, you I'm looking forward to seeing it again though for sure. I, I am really looking forward. Like I do feel – my, my son said this, so I have to give Jack credit for this. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I identified with this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was so on the edge of my seat, yeah. so – like waiting for the next thing to happen, seeing the movie the first time. Yeah. I, I, kind of, I think I struggled to enjoy parts of it because mm. of the anticipation. When, when we watched it, he loved it walking out. And then like an hour later, he was really kind of of mixed emotions about how he felt about it. Mm. And I think when we talked about it, I think he realized, he was like, I need to see it again. Like I think yeah. the first time I saw it, I was just waiting for things to happen so much. I really wasn't watching the movie. And I don't, I don't think I like it as much as I should. Right. If I watch it again, and I don't. I'm not worried the whole time about what's going to happen because you know what's going to happen. But you can yeah, see intricate be more other things and extras. Be present a little bit more and enjoy it more. Yeah. And I, I can totally identify with that. I'm hoping that when I see it tomorrow, I'll be able to put some of that to rest. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought that that was very self aware of him to recognize that he was like struggling with feeling that way. And I think too, it's like you've been looking forward to this for a year. You know, it's like it's like people that get sad on Christmas because Christmas is over. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. There's a little bit of that mixed up into it too, where it's just like the anticipation of this has been so pronounced for so long. And also take note too, because of the way that it ended last year. I, yeah, I, I compare my audience and movie and movie tavern to a Japanese crowd watching a sport. If okay. you've watched any Japanese sports, whether it be like you know uh, anything mixed martial arts or mm. professional wrestling, or whatever, um, they are very studious and, and astute as to how mm. they watch they're very quiet and they mm. only cheer for the most important things that happen mm. but they're watching it like a chess match and i right. felt like that's how this crowd was and they were yeah. waiting for the payoff moments to come because yeah. they were just it was like we were all watching in all on excitement yeah. but we because of the events that happened last time and how we all left out like it was a few yeah yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> we were all waiting for that for those moments to come Yeah, the anticipation kind of gets in the way a little bit 
Absolutely. Yeah. So I felt like, and and that's the way. That's the kind of way that you need to come out of it. I mean, I, I had yeah. a guy uh, of uh, a peer, a colleague of mine, mm. uh, once say, "When you leave out of a Marvel movie, you leave out like you're like you're coming out of a roller coaster. There are some high moments, there's some low moments, but when you came out, you felt like you went for a hell of a ride. And yeah. that's the way you need to fill out. You need to come out of every movie like this. And yeah. when you came out of watching like a DC movie or you watch Transformers." You know that franchise. Um, it's like you came out like, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you coming out here, you're. I mean, the fact that I came out like, I do. I, out of all the movies that I've ever came out of, I never had the moment. I had teary eye moments, but not to the moment where I was just breathing so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> it was cr- like, yeah. what the hell is going? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I- I can totally relate. Yeah. So I, I, I said, I, I'm, I'm really excited. I get a chance to see it again tomorrow. I'm, I'm, you know, interested to see what my wife thinks because she's yeah. much more of a movie fan of this stuff and right. much less a comic book fan. So I'll be curious to see if she feels that it paid off, you know, kind of in a similar way. But, uh, yeah, I, I, my hat's off to them. I think that they, they had a pretty daunting task in front of them and yeah. managed to, you know, check all those boxes and do all the fan service stuff yeah. they had to do and still, you know, make a compelling movie that stood on its own two legs. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think coming out of it, I, I, I was I was very impressed uh, of how they how they thread the needle on this one. I feel like even if God forbid, if any of the other movies mm-hmm. just happen to suck after mm-hmm. this point, mm-hmm. it, it takes nothing away from no, the, I agree. the first I, I, 11 years of this. Yep. And I agree too. Like I agree with the point you were making before about how you know in some of these early movies, they might not have been as as fully realized or fully successful as some of the other movies were. But they had to you know they had to kind of burn their hand on the stove a few times to figure out you know the formula. And yeah. and so I don't I don't think you know Incredible Hulk doesn't diminish this and and you know whatever. Oh Thor, God, no! Incredible Hulk, Hulk was was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I think like even if there are ones that were like maybe you know whatever critically less successful or or and weren't it, as it, as good for some reason can i say I this too for those because I, I hear people talk about this with um dr strange yeah with captain marvel mm. if you've read any of the comic books when when you read sagas like infinity gauntlet or affinity wars or uh or uh civil war or something, there's always the six main books yeah, but within that, there's always these side stories that yep. always help move uh, things along to the main story. That's what I took from the Captain Marvels, the Ant Mans, the um, Spider Mans, the all of, all of that is just side stories to help move along the main story when it gets to that point. Yeah, and get, that's exactly it, this is exactly the same algorithm that they're doing here that they do with the comic books and yeah. just bring it to life. So I. I know I recognize what Captain Marvel was supposed to be and what Black Panther was supposed to be and what Doctor Strange was supposed to be mm-hmm. and, and, and towards the transition to the bigger picture, which is the Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. And people need to realize that. And like every movie is not doesn't have to be an Oscar winner movie, but they damn sure need to move along the story. And they all did. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. I, 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 you know, I just take it as that. But. Uh, Joe, thanks so much for being on the show, man. I absolutely enjoy talking about this fantastic movie with you, man. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me, Dax. I really appreciate so, it. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to do um, Spider-Man down the line. So, if you want, let me know. Yeah. I def- we could definitely talk about the uh, aftermath of what's going to happen in this universe to see if our, you know, uh, our expectations are met. <laughs> I am on board. All right, man. Thanks so much. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you absolutely enjoyed our talk about the most anticipated movie in all of 11 years in our in our lives <laughs> and uh god uh just i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did i hope you didn't get spoiled by it again once again thank you to everybody who really kept a community and really allowed everybody to enjoy what we enjoyed here because mm-hmm. it was a f- fantastic movie and we all look forward to seeing what's going to happen next this week on select start i'm going to have more games to talk about i probably have another review to talk about from there so stay tuned for that um next week like i said i was just telling the joe i'm going to be talking about probably the top 10 not all 22 but where do, where does it lie in the top 10 of people's mind as to where 
these Marvel movies are going to be. So we're definitely going to talk about that next week. And I'm going to have a vote in. You're going to hear it from our ACMG Facebook group to see where it lies from there. So look forward to that next week and much, much more. So, Joe, thanks again. On behalf of myself and Joe Rinaldi, all I got to say is learn to let go, live life, and love all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. We are out of here. People, have a great week. Take care.